In controversial fashion, taking out the Delano Pole Award for the second race in a row is Adrian Devereaux in car number one. His teammate Luciano Salvaro makes it a Hodges Walt of lockout of the front row for the second race in a row. Arto Kekkonen felt like he could have been on the front row had Devereaux not blocked him in qualifying. The stewards had a look at the incident and they didn't issue a penalty. However, Kekkonen uh, was not too impressed with that and had a talk with Devereaux, which uh, I believe involved uh, very adult language. Speaking of uh, Devereaux and Hodges Walter Racing, there have been several teams, none of which want to be named, uh, that have uh, protested the Colton Morrell Alter design, saying that it is against the technical regulations and potentially against the, uh, if not against the technical regulations, against the spirit of them at least. So uh, there's probably going to be an inquiry into the, into the design of the very innovative Colton Morrell Alter, probably sometime before the teams go to Europe, which means uh, probably after Carbondale which is uh, round three of the championship. I will now hand it off to Dan for the first Team Master Cup Series race ever held at Road Atlanta. Thank you, Lance. Devereaux and his teammate Savarol leading the field to the green. It's a Gessler-Richter sweep of the second row. Leonid Roderick and Gaspar D'Souza, an independent trophy car on the third row of the grid. As you see them flying down in turn one, looks like everyone's being uh, fairly civil on the start. The TM Lights race uh, yesterday uh, didn't really have that civil of a start, and it was frankly a bit of a disaster. Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, is already beginning to try to mount a challenge on the two Hodges Walter cars, and they're streaking away from the field already. That may not be a good sign. There were reports that those two cars did not run at their full potential at Las Vegas, and Devereaux ended up winning that race. Here's Craig Mummert in car 29. He's already gone further in a race than he has all season. Not quite sure if that's um, a record he, or uh, something he wants me to mention. However, he uh, hasn't really been uh, too clean this week. Here's Michael Sykes. He's been really looking forward to this race. He has experience at this track. He's uh, well known around the world as an endurance racer, touring car racer. I think he's driven just about everything on four wheels, Michael Sykes. And also right behind him, Scott Bates in that 88 car, Marcus Leonard in the triple nine. They could be fast today. Kevin Dwyer won first practice in this car number 72. He is currently running in eighth place, and now he is having a fantastic run so far, going on to Vina Henton in the sixth car, trying to get around the uh, Volpe driver to take over the seventh position. It looks like he's going to do that. Kevin Dwyer, an awesome start to the race, driving for Team Star USA. This is Tony Durbin's old ride. Well, that's certainly a very good opportunity for him. Here is Gaspar D'Souza, an independent trophy car, running in sixth place. Qualified sixth, running there as well in the Alex Harrison car. I don't think too many people uh, expected that from D'Souza. He's been very strong on some of the oval races, despite being trained as a road racer. The Portuguese driver drove last season for Bill Barclay's team. He impressed sporadically, but uh, didn't really have uh, the best season. Lap 2, Zelda Ashby gets into the back of Scott Bates in the 88 car. Very ambitious move. Oh, Packer Carroll gets more damage. Uh, he hasn't really gone too far in a race without getting damage from someone else's mishap, so uh, another disastrous race for Carroll, but Scott Bates' his damage is terminal in that 88 car. The very popular driver from Oklahoma is pretty much just going to get turned around by Ashby in the 55. Right there, that was a little too ambitious, gets hit by the uh, 2 car, and oh, there goes the camera. And uh, looks like uh, Ashby's teammate Yamino Tenshi got some damage there too. Here's Packer Carroll in the 2 car, that's Rene Ricarmi in the 2 car, Zach Duff in the 5. Now Duff just hooks the back of the 12 car. Of Ricarmier sends, him, sends himself and the French rookie off the road. Ricarmier and Duff both out early on along with Scott Bates. Yulia Nasova, car number eight, was the star of the show probably at Las Vegas. She ran a very strong race in that Katzev is continuing that performance today. Johans and uh, Craig Mummer, Chris Johans, Craig Mummer, they're continuing not to play nice with each other. Now, now we've been focusing mostly on Arto Kakadin and Adrian Devereaux not playing nice with each other, but Chris Johans and Craig Mummer have really been slugging it out with each other in practice. That little door check move has been uh, pretty common between those two drivers. Here is Luciano Savaral running in second to his teammate, Adrian Devereaux. Now, Savaral has been kind of overshadowed by Devereaux most of the offseason. Luciano was expected to win races immediately when he came up to the Master Cup Series. It's shown that potential uh, when he drove uh, last year for the Bolton Speed Stable, and now it looks like he, that he has a hot as well as a racing car. Uh, looks like he might actually have a car that's fast enough to uh, over the whole race distance to actually get him a couple of wins. It was a couple of late race incidents and or mechanical failures that took him out of several races while driving the Bolden cars. He probably could have won Road America and he would have won Decatur had he not thrown it off into the bushes late in the race pretty much all by himself when getting around back markers. And he's got to compete with his teammate for this race win here. Now here is Anthony Griffin, the 08 car. He was docked points and sent to the back of the field. I don't think he's doing his case as a clean driver any good here by dumping uh, Dan McKay into the tire wall pretty early on in the race. 
Griffith was docked, as I mentioned, to 15 points after that incident in the pit lane with Adrian Devereaux. And uh, it looks like he's just taking out uh, Dan McKay for no good reason in the uh, two-team. Now, Craig Mummert, car 29, visits the sand trap, goes across the sand trap, and just kisses the tires there. Another one of the Independence Trophy cars, Barton Sandy, car number 92. This is the BKR team. They've uh, gotten a lot of Australian investors to make this BKR Australia. They're going to promote two Australian drivers in the TM Master Cup Series. And Sandy is one of them. He is... Uh, this is the old Fortner operation, the old uh, team that Danny Saab and won the Cariala Grand Prix with twice, so that is a fairly good team there. Packer Carroll in that two car has got a lot of damage from that uh, first uh, incident there with Zelda Ashby and Scott Bates. Uh, wonder why the stewards haven't really been looking at that. I uh, no wonder. Anyway, here is uh, Chris Johans going around in that black and pink car is Chris Davenport, that silver car Roswell. Davenport in car 19. It was announced that he'll be sharing this car with Brian Sendak and Avery Holtzman. We're not quite sure what races they will be in, but there's a report that uh, Davenport will not run Carbondale next week. Dan Lechleiter, we haven't seen uh, him in a while. Well, we haven't seen that name before, but we've seen him, certainly. Of course, uh, this is the guy that we used to call Dan Klesel. He used to race under a pseudonym for uh, unknown reasons. Well... Dan Lechleiter, he's currently uh, making a very good, pretty good return to the series. He's not far out of the points in this 110 car. And he is an owner-driver this season. Could be a dark horse, the Independence Trophy, in his Lechleiter. Here is... Who are we looking at here? It looks like Lechleiter again in car 110. He's now stuck behind Packer Carroll. It's Barton Sandy uh, crawling all over the back of the 110. Jose Luis Martinez in the 7. And in the back, that white car, Azuma Kaziyama, in for Tom Delgado, at least until... Uh, we get to Europe. Oh, leg lighter not take. Goes a bit wide. Runs Packer Carroll off the track. They're actually battling for position, but Carroll well off the pace yeah, at the moment. He's just trying to hang on until they can maybe get some repairs on that two car. Here's Kazuyama in the 18, as I mentioned before. He had a pretty good run in at uh, Las Vegas, but uh, of course, as I said, he will be stepping out of this car uh, when Tom Delgado is clear to drive. Kurt Pliskin, that 116 car, is clearly punching above his weight. He was not doing very well in practice. Leonid Roderick running inside the top five, running fifth actually, is beginning to challenge the 10 car of Matthias Taub. Taub has kind of been jamming up Roderick a bit. The four car is a little faster, but Taub is pretty good on those brakes. Uh, we, we know that the guesser is pretty uh, good on the brakes, and uh, well, Roderick's having a bit of a hard time with that. Henton, Davina Henton, car number six, having a fantastic run, and uh, there was a lot of people wondering if Davina Henton was able to handle the pressure of taking the place of Alexis Rainsford, the two-time Master Cup champion. She seems to be answering that pretty well. Henton is having a pretty strong run. She's had a pretty strong weekend, and so far this season has kind of had the edge over Packer Carroll. Well, um, Packer Carroll's been kind of getting into incidents not of his own doing, so I'm not quite sure it's fair to say that, but uh, so far in qualifying and in, the, and in practice, Henton has been quicker. Now, Marcus Leonard has also been one driver who's clearly had the edge over his teammate. Uh, Zach Duff in the five car is Leonard's team. Now, Duff's already out of the race, and he's going to be visiting the stewards. We know that. Leonard running inside the top ten. We didn't think the Xenos cars would be that strong. Well, they've got Marcus Leonard. They clearly are. Well, looking off the back of Kevin Dwyer. What a nice camera. This is looking back at Michael Sykes in that 44 car. Here is Kevin Dwyer still holding position in this 72 car, still inside the top ten. This is a great run for the uh, Minnesota driver, the son of six-time TM Master Cup Series champion Benny Dwyer. Kevin is wanting to prove himself to the racing fraternity. He has done so so far this weekend. He led a good deal of the Cariala Grand Prix, and I think he could have won that race had it not been <clears throat> for several uh, pit uh, incidents that he had. Uh, it's not very good pit work during last year's Cariala Grand Prix, and that cost him a chance at winning that race. Michael Sykes, car 44. There's a problem with that car. Sykesy, oh no. Oh, sykesy has got an engine blow-up, looks like. The Inglesby's have not been too reliable in the past, and that trend continues. Unfortunate for the Welshman, who looked like he was going to have a, career, a great day today. Yamino Tenshi, car number 25, uh, was also involved in that uh, second lap incident between Ashby and Scott Bates. Got a little bit of damage there. Tenshi is way off the pace in that 25 car, and that's quite a shame for the uh, popular Japanese driver. Uh, she's just trying to hold on right now and uh, wait for the first pit stop, it looks like. Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savaral have pulled a pretty big gap on the rest of the field right now. Uh, there's some people that say that these cars may have anything from traction control to uh, just an oversized engine, which I don't really buy the oversized engine argument. Traction control, I don't know. I doubt it. But uh, Devereaux and Savaral have been very fast coming off the corners, I've noticed. Uh, 
these two Altairs have just been blindingly quick on their acceleration, and that might be uh, where they are um, making most of their, of their speed. At least that would be my guess. Here's Yulia Nasova, car number 8, uh, trying to challenge Scott Stoiler in that 74 car, running in about 12th place at the moment. Here is the second of the BKR Australia cars. This is Troy Adams. He ran the round of Indianapolis last year, qualified for that race. He hasn't really shown a whole lot of speed this weekend. He's been outpaced by his teammate Barton Sandy. But uh, Adams, he's uh, well, doesn't have too many starts under his belt. He has uh, this race and uh, not as much racing experience as his teammate. But uh, he's still doing a decent job in that 91 car. He's kept it on the road. Here is uh, the, uh, we're looking at Packer Carroll in the two car. He's also way far behind. He could be a danger when the leaders come to lap him. Here is Arto Kekin in car number nine, having a very lonely race in third right now. There's a pretty big gap in front and behind him. He's opened up a huge gap over his teammate, Matthias Taub, in car number 10. Tenshi is pitted on lap 11. That's pretty early. Comes out of the pit lane. Oh, contact with the 15 car. That is Blake Camphausen in the uh, that red car. Now, it looked like Tenchi may have just jumped in front of him when she was coming out of the pit lane. Now, I don't really know about that. Let's have a look at this. Okay, there's Tenchi. Oh, she's all the way. Oh, she used all the pit exit road that she had. That's just one of those uh, unfortunate comings together. Uh, it's part of the way the pit exit is here at Road Atlanta. Campau's and not too impressed, but uh, that's really just the way that pit exit goes. There's uh, not a whole lot of room coming off that pit exit, and Tenchi used every single bit of that pit exit that she could before running into the grass which uh, probably could have spun the car out. Adrian Devereaux pits on lap 14. He is the first of the leaders to hit the pit lane in uh, car number one. Arto Kakinen, car nine, also pitting on lap 14 in the car number nine. His teammate, Taub, is doing likewise. Now, the Hodges-Walter cars apparently are staggering their pit stops. They're now pitting them both at the same time. Ian Cooper, car triple seven, also in lap 14. Now, what I mean by staggering their pit stalls is that they have the first two pit stalls, and they're trying to avoid a pit collision by pitting those two cars on different laps. And it looks like Devereaux opted to pit first this time. As we're watching some of the other cars coming to the pit lane. Lewis Kingston, Chris Johans. That's Davenport. That looks like Roswell. That's Silver. Uh, the, the Silver uh, Freedom for Palestine car. Lecklider in. That dark orange car. And looks like Ashby's in. And one of the Majestic Motorsports cars. Ryan Matthews, obviously. Bushanda's in. We'll get to him in a little bit. Charlie Waters is in. Here is Savarol in on lap 15, one lap after the leaders. Leonard Roderick, Gaspar D'Souza pitting with him. Uh, D'Souza in that zero car having a pretty good run now. Here's Adrian Devereaux. Now, while Luciano was in the pits, he got stuck behind Craig Mummert in the 29 car, who he's actually putting a lap down, believe it or not. And uh, the 29 car really is being a bit of an obstacle. He's not making things uh, terribly easy for Adrian Devereaux. Now, Mummert was pretty composed last year. I just wonder if uh, driving for a team that might be a little off the pace has just unsettled him a little bit in that uh, 29 car. He's not really had uh, a good season so far. Luciano Savaral takes the lead from Devereaux under the pit stop cycle. Savaral had a better pit stop than Devereaux, and he also did get held up by a couple back markers. Arto Kekinen is uh, still sitting in a very lonely third place in the uh, Gessler. There's Taub Henton in that sixth car having a good run. Got around Roderick. Um, Actually, didn't get around Roderick in the pit in the pit lane. Actually, got around him on the racetrack. There, you also noticed Kevin Dwyer in ninth place. Great run for Kevin Dwyer right there so far. Nasova still sitting there in 12th. Kingston, Chris Johns down at 14th. Davenport having a good run in 15th place in car 19, the Black Diamond car. Here we are with Davina Henton. Now she's hounding Matthias Taub. She got around Leonard Roderick on the last corner and uh, a couple laps ago. Now here is uh, Henton trying to get around the uh, 10 car. Taub, Taub. Very defensive driving in that 10 car, but uh, he's entitled to do that. Uh, you're racing for position. Uh, you're, you're faster. You pass them. Uh, anyway, here is Kevin Dwyer trying to lap a back marker. That is Yamino Tenshi in the 25. Tenshi playing it uh, pretty uh, pretty nice for the most part with the uh, 72. Uh, Kevin Dwyer trying to pass Tenshi around the outside. That's a daring move. You don't really want to go on the outside of a back marker in the last corner. That uh, could be a potential disaster. Uh, how about Gaspar Souza still running in the top 10, 7th place for the young Portuguese driver. Like I said earlier, ran for Bill Barclay last year, and uh, he formerly drove for Hodges Walter Racing in the, uh, one, when they had that 169 car. The car was completely adorned with the Portuguese flag at his request, and, uh, well, D'Souza is continuing to have a strong run here today in the Alex Harrison car. This is an independence trophy car, meaning that uh, if he has a good run today, that 
this could be a very, um, well, it could be very helpful towards his Independence Trophy bid here in this car at number zero. The Alex Harrison team has always had a car that looks like this. They had Shane Legg last year, Julian Alexander the year before that. It's been a black car with a lot of yellow in places. You wouldn't really expect to see a team put yellow on it. That's uh, how they uh, distinguish themselves from the other cars out there. And it's nice to see that a team is able to find a way to make their car stand out while uh, not making it uh, a bit of an eyesore. This uh, Zero team has been around for quite a while, but they just haven't been full-time ever. Back with the leaders. Luciano Savarola has caught Packer Carroll and is about to put the two-car lap down. But Packer's not exactly making Luciano Savarola's life that easy. Carroll is, uh, well, he's kind of gotten under some people's skin the wrong way, especially after Las Vegas. Uh, there are a couple of drivers not terribly happy with him, but Adrian Devereaux in car number one is probably going to be liking what he sees up here because Packer Carroll holding up his teammate is going to allow him to close in a little bit. So Devereaux just lurking back there. It's kind of like that ominous sign of a shark fin. Devereaux just lurking back there, waiting to strike. Kevin Dwyer in car number 72 is still running inside the top 10. Uh, speaking of Kevin Dwyer, uh, there is potentially a TM Master Cup Series race at the Dwyer Speed Park coming soon. Uh, the track may undergo some renovations, including the uh, rather dangerous Goliath corner. It was uh, part of the concern there. But uh, Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car is uh, really working to bring... Uh, a bringing the Master Cup Series to uh, his hometown. Of course, he's from Minnesota, and so is uh, the whole family there. Right behind him, Marcus Leonard, car triple nine. The uh, the Umbrella Corporation car is going to have, uh, looks like he's got a problem. Marcus Leonard in trouble. The Zenos is out. Marcus Leonard, car triple nine. That's both Zenos cars out of the race. Earlier, I said we were talking about VJ Pushanda. Now, he was replaced in the first race by Bell and Kumandoros, and he finished 21st. VJ Pushanda, the former Formula A driver, the first Indian to ever race in a TM Master Cup Series race is currently running in 22nd place. So the two Tinos looking a lot more competitive than they were last year in uh, the series. Bushanda having a great run here at Road Atlanta. I don't even think he's seen this track before. Uh, I don't think too many of the other drivers here have either, though. Kevin Dwyer about to lose the place to Scott Stoidler. Stoidler comes on the attack. Oh, that's a very ambitious move by Stoidler. Uh, Kevin Dwyer, very heads up driving there, didn't throw a block on Stoidler, otherwise that could have ended in tears for him in that 72 car. But now he's going to try to get back around Stoidler as they come down the long straight, but that Tremwell of Stoidler just seems to be a little bit better down the straights than Kevin Dwyer's car is. Dwyer in that 72 car trying to catch Stoidler as they come into the break zone. Here he comes. It looks like Stoidler may have a better run here. Oh, yeah, it looks like Stoidler may have just a better exit there. You can see Stoidler pulling away just a little bit over Kevin Dwyer in this 72 car. Stoidler, talk about a man having a rejuvenated season. Scott Stoidler had a terrible 2011 campaign, but this year he's clearly turned it around. Davina Henton pits the pit lane lap 25. Now that's not just a little too early to hit the pit lane. That's way too early. So clearly there must be something going wrong there. Luciano Savarol pits on lap 27. And this time Adrian Devereaux in the one car stays out. And as I said earlier, that makes sense to avoid a... The two cars colliding with each other in the pit lane, which is uh, clearly what the team is trying to avoid uh, with uh, when they have two cars racing for the lead to pit them on different laps. That uh, pretty common strategy. Now here's Yulia Sova. She's worked her way up to battle with Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car. Sova, that's a very ambitious move. That was a little too ambitious from Sova. Hits the wall. Sova spins out. That was a fantastic run, and that's all gone to waste. Very ambitious move around, trying to get around Kevin Dwyer, but just ran out of racetrack and went off into the grass, spun it out, and car number eight in trouble. This is right before the pit cycles, and Nasova is going to have to, well, it's probably better have it happen now, because Nasova will be able to uh, do some repairs on that car. Adrian Devereaux is still not pitted yet. We're on lap 29. He has not hit the pit lane in this one car. Several other cars are going into the pits. Arto Kekkonen in the nine car is hitting the pit lane in uh, the Gessler. He's had a pretty good run today. He's been a solid third all race. His teammate Tao pits on the same lap, so it looks like the Gessler boys are uh, just uh, mirroring each other's strategy here. Roderick in the four car also pits with the uh, the two Gessler cars. Roderick apparently has set his goal on beating the Gesslers. Devereaux finally pits on lap 30, very late. Devereaux looks like he may have tried to get a couple hot laps out while well, there was no one else on track. Now, Luciano Salvarol has encountered Kevin Dwyer, who is all, who also, like Devereaux, stayed out very late. Creating great fuel economy from that SAR, but uh, you see the 72 car peels off into the pit lane. So where the Team SAR USA can service Kevin Dwyer's car. 
Now here is Adrian Devereaux in car number one. We're going to see if he's won the pit lane battle yet. No, he hasn't. Savarol is still in the lead in car number three. So Luciano Savarol, it looks like he's held the lead from Devereaux at the end of the second pit cycle. Now these two cars have a pretty big lead on the rest of the field. Henton has moved up in the third. That was a great pit work, a pit call by the Volpe Racing Team uh, crew there. The boys and girls down there as Arto uh, falls back to fourth. And it looks like Taub is going to have to settle with fifth place at the moment. Ian Cooper has jumped up to sixth place in the triple seven car. I think he pitted fairly early as well. Oh, Chris Johans in trouble. Last year's title runner-up, Chris Johans, car 64 of the Shaper Group. Tremwell is going to drop out of the race. That is an engine uh, failure there. Now, he's been outpaced by Scott Stoiler this week and in the first race at Las Vegas. And this is not what Chris Johans needs if he is going to try to challenge for this year's championship, especially when the Hodges-Walter cars are running as strong as they are today. It's very unfortunate for the very popular driver. This is the closest he is going to get to a home race. Of course, Chris Johans is from Florida. Daniel Lechleiter in car number 10, Blake Camphausen in car 15, and Vijay Pushanda in car 42 are doing battle for the final points position. Lechleiter holds 20th, Pushanda 21st. Last season, we didn't even, at this point, we didn't even think Dutina was going to score a point. In fact, they only scored one point in all of last season. Speaking of points, Barton Sandy in car 92 is inside the points. Great run from the Australian today. Uh, in his Master Cup Series debut, he's uh, ran a very clean race and a very anonymous race, which is uh, a very uneventful day, which is kind of what you want in your debut. You don't really want people talking about you unless you're at the front. Um, you don't want to be talked about for the wrong reasons. Azuma Kazuyama in the 18 car, uh, making people question why he was left out of a race seat, maybe, in this 18 car. Of course, this will be the 37 car when uh, Tom Delgado takes back over, and I would say uh, sing more of Kazuyama's praises, He's running in, I think, around 18th or 19th 18th place. Well, his teammate, Lewis Kingston, running 11th. Kingston has uh, well had the advantage over Kazuyama this weekend in that in that uh, 17 car. Now, here's Gaspar Souza wildly fending off uh, Craig Mummer, who's been trying to race him, actually, and I don't think the Souza's been terribly happy with that. The Alex Harrison team having a fantastic day, though, in that zero car. Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, running in fourth place uh, again. Really nobody around him. I, it's probably one of the most uh, lonely races he's ever run. He hasn't really encountered any back markers, hasn't really seen other cars unless they're in the pit lane or passing him by when he's in the pit lane. There's Henton in front of him, but that's really uh, uh, the most he's had to see, really, on, out in front of him. Uh, Arto Kakin having a very solid day, and uh, his cool demeanor clearly showing through. Matthias Taub, car number 10, sits in fifth position. He's also kind of having a lonely day. Luciano Salverall, in the closing stages of the race, has come across a whole bunch of back markers. Ryan Matthews, Zelda Ashby, that held him up for quite a while, but they were racing each other for position. Adrian Devereaux has now caught them. And Devereaux, who had, uh, had been uh, falling back just a little bit, looks like he's going to try to use the back markers uh, to hopefully catch up to his teammate. Now, that's been Devereaux's uh, favorite passing zone of the day, is right in those S's. I don't think too many other people have uh, really pulled off moves there successfully today. But there you see, more back markers getting in Savarol's way. Charlie Waters in the 30 car, and uh, right in front of Waters is the 91 of Troy Adams, who is making his second career start. At this point, Luciano Savarol was basically shouting over his radio to get the officials to move the 30 car out of the way. He finally does so. Charlie Waters bit out of the line there, maybe. But here is Adrian Devereaux, who is trying to capitalize on that with one lap to go, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to catch his teammate Luciano Savarol unless something big happens in the last couple of corners. And here we are with Savarol. He's going to try to make a pass around another lap car that he doesn't really need to make a move on. But coming down the final corner, around comes Luciano Savarol to take his first TM Master Cup Series win and the first win for a Brazilian driver. Savarol takes home the win, his teammate Devereaux second. Davina Henson in the Volpe comes home a very solid third place. The two Gesslers complete the top 10. Ian Cooper, a great run in the 777 car in sixth place. Roderick D'Souza had to settle with eighth place, but a great run for him. Scott Stoidler and Kevin Dwyer, top 10 finish for the Minnesota driver. Lewis Kingston, car number 17 in 11th place. Chris Davenport, 12th. Dale Roswell in the racing for Palestine car. Great run for him. Nasova, Pliskin, there you see Barton Sandy, the 92 car. Another, another points finish for an independent trophy car. Martinez had a good day. So did Blake Camphausen. And Dan Lechleiter makes his return to the series, takes home a point for his own team, beating Vijay Pushanda in the Tutino. 
And let's have a look at the Master Cup Series driver's points, leaving Road America and entering Carbondale. And with a second being his worst finish of the year, it's no surprise that Adrian Devereaux has a pretty big lead in the championship. However, as last year showed, uh, you can erase a pretty big championship lead pretty quickly. Luciano Savarol sits second with a win today. Arto Kekkonen, Davina Henson, Lewis Kingston having a very strong beginning of the year in the 17 car. And Silva, Scott Bates, Roswell in the top 10 of the championship. I didn't I think anyone expected that for a team that really uh, we didn't even know was going to be running until about a week before the season opener. So Dale Roswell, this is a great start of the year for him. Tal Pliskin in the 16 car punching above his weight. Scott Stoiler having a great start to the year. Of course, there's a couple independent trophy cars in the mix there like Danny Sauvin, Michael Madrigal, and Gaspar Souza. but uh, as the season goes on, they will uh, inevitably drop through the standings as uh, they're not really running the whole season. They're only running four races apiece, plus Cariola, Decatur, and Indianapolis. They'll be attempting those. Chris Davenport in the 19 car, he's not running the whole season either, and neither is Azuma Kaziyama, but for both those drivers, I'd say they've had a very good start to the year. And let's check on the independent trophy standings. Leaving Road America, Danny Savin still holds the top spot. Gaspar Souza and Michael Madrigal just two points behind. Barton Sandy, Jacob Eicholtz, Brandon LaRoe, Dan Lechleiter will be at Carbondale. And Troy Adams in car 91 rounds out the independent trophy standings. Eight of the 17 cars have made a run so far.